Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. I'm here in the pyramid. Ooh. And it's Torch City down here. So I thought I'd try something. Boop. Glowstone. slime and it looks super grid like from up here so I replaced all this this whole quarter of the pyramid is all now sandstone on the floor instead of sand or other miscellaneous things and glowstone for the lighting it's a little grid like um, and I put glowstone in over here and where I'm finding that where it's you know where there is miscellaneous or miscellaneous stone in the ground the glowstone's harder to see so I might go and redecorate put in something I don't know texture pattern like in here um, but I am cleaning this up this looks so much neater and getting rid of all of the gravel and sand from here helps because now then I can do something else I can then dig down below here if I wanted if I wanted I don't know don't know if I'm going to do that or not, but um, the sand's a nice, has a nice sort of texture to it, but the sandstone's nice and clean looking. And I got rid of some torches that were along here that ran out from the portal out to this, this edge of the pyramid, the front, what I consider to be the front of the pyramid. It's where the front entrance is, up there. Because uh, when I put it in the portal, I mistakenly uh, I thought that this was where the center of the pyramid was going to be. It is not. So I had this line running off here. And then when I went and laid out the actual thing of the pyramid, it became clear that that was not going to be the center of the pyramid. And the center of the pyramid is right here. Boop. And I'll have to put in something here to indicate that. This is the the center. The very tippy top is right up there. The front door, the front entrance, is off-center, slightly, as it is in the real pyramid. And it might be good to do something to put some sort of light onto the bottom of these chambers here. Even though it was never the intention to make all this visible from down here. But, that's the way it goes. So anyway, this has been, I've been working on this, wearing down my tools a little bit. But it'll be, it's a nice sort of zen grindy sort of task. We are still on 1.12.2. The Minecraft 1.13.1 came out officially. Oh, and I still need to do all these. I'm probably going to pick up all these rails because I don't think I need them anymore. They were a way of getting sheep from the wool farm over here. Bloop. Getting them from my little sheep breeding area here and I don't think I need any more I've got more sheep over there and in fact there's so much stuff going on over there between the sheep and the mine carts and all that stuff that frankly um, it's it's a little it's a little framey it's a little laggy over there I've got two sheep in here in case I need to breed up anymore I think that's all it will be so I have to I have to clean this up as well um, I was initially thinking of leaving this in case I wanted to pull some of the villagers that I've got back here move them around but I've got them in boats um, it's pretty easy to move them around in the boats hey guys how are you doing yeah so I haven't been back here in a little while huh flower pot huh so I've got villagers these are brown coats that I think are clean right these guys are not they, oh, they've got potatoes. They they have they should have some potatoes in their pockets. That's fine. We don't care about that. These guys are growing carrots. Um, and I believe I've gone through enough of harvesting with them and forcing them to plant what they have that I think they only have carrots now, but it's hard to say. Ah, darn it. I was afraid of that. Okay. We'll fix that. Why don't I have a chest here with some tools? 
That would be, that would make too much sense. And that's a natural spawn desert bunny right there. Don't see too many of them, but in theory they can spawn in here on the grass and in here on the grass, although they will have a greater chance of spawning with uh, sky access, which they do not have and will not have. But never mind. So as I was saying, Minecraft 1.13 is out. 1.13.1 is out now. And I was kind of hoping that this would mean, I only need one of those. Uh, this would mean that the spigot server people would finally be like, oh, okay, well, we'll finally, we'll finally finalize our updates. They're still releasing development builds of 1.13 spigot. And uh, they're still warning that upgrading existing worlds hey dude let's move okay huh i don't want to hit you when i do this okay uh they're still warning that when you're updating worlds it's not advised and i don't want to like cause problems here although the testing i've done suggests that we can probably get away with it uh but they have not released a final 1.13 spigot nor have they started releasing 1.13.1 spigot development builds. So, don't know why that is. It's a fine. Okay, I need to go repair some stuff. And we have something to check out over at Barb Makes Things Place. So let me get over there and we'll go check that out. This hallway here isn't terribly long, but I feel like I want to put in a rail well, hey, Blaze guys, and I should slab off the top of that. I really need to get back to developing this. There is one Wither Skeleton there and three Blazes. Do I want to deal with them to get the infinitesimal chance of getting his skull? I don't think so. Not right now. The path down this tunnel here to get out to the Witch Farm and out to where the uh, the 1.13 expansion area will be. Uh, I want to put in a rail here too, but I have this issue that I've got these um, portals in the way. And although I guess I could wrap the rail around here, and ideally each each node in the, the passageway here would, uh, would stop. So when you get to this point, it kicks you out and then you can go through this portal if you want. Otherwise, you can come around here and get in the thing. But this is a really short path for a minecart. And this isn't... This is a little longer, but it's not that long. So I'm thinking about... We have a little spot. Let's see if we can see it from the windows here. Hello, Mr. Gast. I hear you. Um, hi. Hi. No. Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah, I can't see it. Started digging a tunnel through the nether, thinking it was going to be for this, and I was in the wrong place. So I'm thinking of making a, a parallel expressway tunnel that is there just for the minecart that goes from... And I think maybe I thought I was going to be able to go directly from the backside of the my portal room there and go down this way. Maybe that's what I'll do, and I'll have it come along and exit so there'll be a second parallel tunnel that will only be there to get to uh, the witch farm and I can have those side branches off at these nodes so that if people want to of course this uh, this kind of high and this this might screw up Briskensky's little exit here it's the only exit other than the nether fortress that we have from the tunnel system out to the nether itself um but i might uh, just relocate things i don't think anyone's using that door a whole lot so i think that will be fine so that tunnel would come along and would probably end up right here so we have two or i could just make this a really wide tunnel and put multiple uh, i don't know we'll see and then, of course, then you can pop out and come over here and take the, whatever, eight-minute ride <laughs> down to the the 1.13 exit point, which I haven't checked that portal lately. I should 
double check at some point to make sure that nobody did something silly like, you know, light it. But, witch farm, I didn't really want to wander down this way. Forgive me. Oh good, it's daytime. Let's get fixed. Oh yes, it did. Oh, we have our map of the, uh, Oh, look, there's a big tree. And what's this green, big green space? Well, let's go take a look. We have a big green blob here. Next to a green beacon. Oh, uh, that's cool. So if you haven't seen it, there's a really funny video uh, of... Uh, I think it was uh, a couple of the Hermitcraft guys were built a chicken fountain, which is pretty darn funny. And they were using the bubble columns in 1.13 to build a little water stream that pushes chickens up in the air and then they fall out to the side and then off to the side they built a little launcher arrow launcher thing to shoot flaming arrows at the chickens it was really silly and uh, would be a lag generator just total lag machine for the server but um still pretty darn cool oh she's got um so I showed that to Barb Mix Things, and she thought that was pretty funny. And I was thinking that'd be neat to build inside a bouncy house. Not for chickens, per se, but for players. She's got lights underneath the, the slime here. Does that actually give us light? Sure does. Oh, nifty. Oh, she must have patches of it down here. Okay, cool. So the slime probably reduces the light more than just the one block height of the slime. Cool. Anyway, so this is the bouncy house. Oops, get out of the beacon beam. This is quite a bit more elaborate of a bouncy house design than I was expecting, but hey. Uh, it's still pretty cool. So we'll see how big this gets uh, between the slime farms that uh, Barb Mixings is built right underneath this tower here and mine. Should be plenty of slime to be building this thing. And it could be pretty substantial, like a total slime tower. We'll see. But I like the kind of organic organic shape. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of animals on that little spit of land there. We need to probably do something about that. Hi, Mr. Iron Golem. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, not bad. Marax was on earlier today. I was chatting with him a little bit. So, boop. Um, his place, I'm pretty darn sure, is within 128 blocks of this. It's over there. You can't see it. It's outside the render distance. But I believe this farm is still active and we're still breeding golems even when, oh, we're building this up again, uh, even when uh, you can't see it. So that's pretty cool. His tower is over there. Um, he's been working on it, but I think nothing super substantial, but we can go take a look. Yeah. There's this tower. See, it's not very far away. You can see both of them at the same time if you're standing in between. Yeah, I don't see... He hasn't built up any further. And looking in through the windows, I don't see any substantial additions. That's... But, still pretty cool. Okay. Let's head back home. I don't think there's been much much else going on. The bouncy house is, is, I think, going to be quite a bit of work. So that's going to be cool to watch that evolve. I will post a link to the chicken fountain video that inspired it. And, uh, and Barb makes things YouTube channel. She doesn't post a lot of 
Minecraft, but uh, she does weekly videos making projects, and they're pretty cool videos, so um, you should go watch that. Back home. Ooh, stay on the path. And I need, I, need to, I need to do some lighting up around here. This is... That is all dark. Um, I have my brightness set up to bright, and I'm thinking, I, I think I did some uh, coordinate checking, and my two chunk slime farm is right down, I think, around here. So I'm thinking of extending that up to the surface so that it gets sky access, and should improve the production of it, and it should be active while I'm here, I think. Although some of the slimes might be despawning in the lower parts of it. Uh, but, and I might convert it over to a more efficient design than what I'm doing. Uh, using magma blocks and iron golems and all that stuff. And I'm not constrained there to a single chunk design. So I can actually place things out the way they should be. But, Let's see, is there anything else I need here? I don't know. Well, let's, I'm gonna go repair stuff and you can come with. Oh, here we are at the gold farm and I don't have too much stuff to repair, but I do have a few things. So let's get this all set up and let's anger some piggies. Oh. Lag much? What's going on here? It's catching up. That's kind of weird. I'll have to check on the server stats. One thing I might want to do on this is something I did not do in the initial design and build was to put a captive pigman out somewhere in, in the way here so that he can, once he gets angry, he should stay angry. So if I build a little platform out here that's disconnected and then he's like trapped inside um, the fence gates or something so that you can't wander off the edge because these guys will wander off the edge even though they shouldn't. Um, and they may be getting pushed, I, I don't know, but they will occasionally go off the edges of these ramps, these, these platforms trying to get at me. Come on guys, there you go. Come on. You know I'm there, right? Did I big build the donuts too big? Um, so anyway, having having one guy that sticks around who stays angry, stays aggro at the player, should help maintain the uh, chain reaction. Uh, and I've seen designs where they put iron golems on the outside of the rings to draw the the magma cubes off, but. I don't, the magma cubes aren't that big of a deal and they don't really get in the way too much. They do, will, they will end up down on the platform down here. And I guess drawing them off out the side will get them off the, so they don't fall on this platform. But they then end up on the bedrock down there and they don't die completely. They just, they'll break into the next smallest size. Hey dude, I'm right here. Huh. Maybe those donuts are too big. Oh, no, there he goes. He he got he got part of the wave. So these guys aren't that big of a deal. But uh, so putting putting the aggro guy in here might uh, might be something I do. This maintains the aggro chain pretty well, but periodically it does break, like right now. And if I have an aggro dude here, I can just toss a snowball or something at him to uh, re-kick off the chain reaction or start it in the first place. Don't want to be lobbing arrows at him because I don't want him to die, but... Okay. So, what else is going on? Um, the... I'll put a couple links in the, the description but there's a guy named Matt Farley, who's a musician. He's written an awful lot of music. In fact, he's, he, by his count, he has written something like 19,000 songs. And uh, there's quite a wide variety of songs in those 19,000. 
Um, some of them are songs that are really intended just to get people to to say what the heck is this and click on them um he also does custom songs but <clears throat> he oh my stuff is repaired um so he once a year he has a he has a podcast that he calls the infomercial podcast where he basically says oh here's the new music that i'm releasing and talks about it and plays it um and so he uh but once a year he does a cover song challenge and this year i actually entered a song i don't do a lot of songs and he you know his songs are all very lyric oriented um and i don't do a lot of lyrics in my music as you may have figured out if you have watched any of my rpm challenge uh, minecraft based uh, based music but so I, I took uh, some a voice synthesizer and and ha and sort of taught it how to sing the song and then uh, sort of composed some music to go behind it and I submitted it to the to the con to the challenge he does pick a winner and uh, and I, I have no expectation of actually winning but I actually really like the piece that I did uh, so I will I put it up on Bandcamp, so I will put a link to it so you can go take a listen if you like um, and We'll see what happens with that uh, You can go Listen to it on the Bandcamp, and I will link to the episode of the podcast as well um, he, He's an entertaining guy. I really like the music that he does. He makes a uh, bunch of songs under the name uh, he, he does a band basically changes his band names pretty much not every record but for different sort of topics he has different band names so he has a band called the toilet bowl cleaners and he sings nothing but like poop songs which aren't the most uh, they get old a little they get old quickly but um, I covered one of the poop songs it's a song called poop into a wormhole and funnily enough, I am not the only person in this year's challenge who covered it, that song. So, um, boop. Speaking of pooping, hi chickens. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's the song that I did, and we're having fun on on the Twitterverse, going through and chatting about all the different cover songs because they're all different styles and different people putting their own takes and spins on on various Matt Farley songs so there's a lot of slimes going on in there let's go see if I can catch them probably not they're probably all just about to die Yeah, I, they're all, all the sound is gone now. Let's see if we can catch any of them. So yeah, this is two, two contiguous slime chunks. Oh, there's, there's a guy getting beat to death on the cactus. Yeah. So if I, if I do these and, and do them with iron golems off to the sides to draw them off so I don't have to have this sort of tiered water flow. Um, I can actually fit right now, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I can actually fit seven layers in here. So that's that should double and keep it in the lowest uh, sub chunk. And then in theory, that should let me double the output the productivity of my the one in the in the pyramid um, and then using the golems it'll draw them off even more more quickly because right now I'm just sort of relying on their random AI they sort of hop in random directions uh, so this is not a particularly efficient slime farm but it is completely passive it just kind of sits here and does its thing and no one ever has to look at it 
get more slimes. And just every now and then I come down and it's a bunch of slime blo slime balls that I have to pick up and make into slime blocks. I brought a bunch of them upstairs, but uh, so that that thing could probably output more than it is. I know it could output more than it is currently. And if I use the the magma blocks to kill the slimes with hopper minecarts to pick them up. Uh, we can try that and build what, in theory, should be the most productive slime farm that you can build in two chunks. Uh, but I will have to light up some of the stuff around here uh, just in order to, to maximize the spawning. Because I have a lot of dark areas. Right around which, like, the, the desert and, and all that stuff is all within spawning range of that slime farm, so... And I'm sure there's caves galore down there. Although we found and lit up quite a few of them. Okay, let me go put my gold away. And... Boop. Nine of those. Eight of those. Get another block. Put it there. All right, Wait. those shulker boxes are just ore. Whew. All right. I heard thunder. Is it storming out? Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's raining right now. So we don't get too much of that here in the savanna. But yeah, all that down there needs to be lit up. All this needs to be lit up, and a lot of this is going to be cleared out as a result of the construction. Uh, this little floating pillar of stone probably just needs to go away. Uh, and this is water, so not too much needs to be done over here. And I think I have a large part of this area lit up, although I can see some dark stuff right over there on Riskensee's Mountain. So like this and this and all that desert needs to be lit up. And you can see the villager farm over there. So I'm thinking the slime farm, slime farm peek, peeking out over, out. Okay. Hello, baby zombie. Not today, thank you. Um, a little slime farm peeking out over there. I don't think it's gonna be too troublesome. Anyway, okay. I think that's about it. Um, I will, as I said, I'll post the videos or the video link to the uh, chicken fountain on the Hermitcraft server. That's really funny. You should go watch it. Uh, and I'll put a link to Barb Make Things channel. And uh, also a link to the my Bandcamp page with the my version of Poop into a Wormhole. And I'll see if I can find a good link to the original and post that as well. So there you go. Thank you for watching. This is Theron. It's been Minecraft Line Party, and I will see you next time. All right. Bye.